All right, here's a question where um, we can use factoring to help us. It's showing us a quadratic uh, function, showing us a graph, So, and we're throwing a, a baseball. Um, interestingly, so they're throwing a baseball, and they're starting 224 meters in the air. <laughs> so throwing it from the top of a building somewhere. Interesting. So there's the flight, and uh, so the path, is defined by that function. And so if I want to know where the ball is, how high it is at any point, that's what this height is, all I have to do is put in a time uh, saying uh, like uh, how how high is the ball after five seconds, how high is the ball after something else. So here's some of the questions they ask you. So here's our function, h of t, negative 16 t squared plus 80 t, plus 224, and so they say after zero seconds, one second, three, four, six, let's pick uh, three. So find the height of the ball uh, after three seconds. Now, notice that this thing there, it's functional notation, so that means I have a function that's known as h, and I'm plugging in a three everywhere I see a t. Okay, so negative 16 times three squared, plus 80 times 3, plus 224. Okay, figuring out what that is. 3 squared is 9, 9 times 16, negative 144, I think. 80 times 3, about 240, plus 224 is equal to, uh, what would that be, 96, yeah, 96 plus 224 equals uh, 320. No. Yeah, 320. So after three seconds, the ball is still 320 feet in the air. So it must still be rising after three seconds. That's, that's quite a bit, eh? Uh, for a ball to still be rising after three seconds. Anyway, that would be the height after three seconds. And you can figure out the other ones just by plugging those numbers in everywhere for a T. And then in letter B, it says, find an equivalent expression for h of t by factoring. Okay, so here's our h of t, uh, negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 224. Um, sometimes we factor just the first two, and that helps us find a vertex of a, of a parabola that tells us where this point is. But here, I think that they want us to factor the whole thing. Uh, like I can't, right now I can't see, I guess I can multiply 16 times 224, but that's going to be a huge number. I wonder if 16 will go into everything. Let's give that a shot. So I'd factor out a negative 16 out of this, that'd leave t squared. 80 divided 16, I think is negative 5t. Ooh, I'm liking it. And 16 into 224, uh, 114, I think. Plus, no, not plus, it'd be minus, whoops, I would like an eraser. Um, uh, I'm factoring out a minus, so this would be a minus 14. There we go. And then, oh, hey, I can, I might be able to factor that into two of these. So a t and a t, two things that multiply to negative 14 add to negative seven. I think negative five, I'm thinking negative seven and a positive two. Does that work? t squared plus 2t minus 7t, that's minus 5t minus 14, that's it. Okay, so um, this function h of t, I could also call it this. And another useful thing there is uh, if I want to plug in a number, uh, I can plug it in up here like I did there, or I could plug it into this one. As long as I've done it right, I could plug the 3 in there. So negative 16 times... 3 minus 7 times uh, 3 plus 2. Okay, so it'd be negative 16 times negative 4 times, uh, looks like 5, I think. Okay, uh, 16 times 4, that'd be a positive 64. Uh, and 64 times 5, I'm hoping it's 320. Uh, 5, 4 is a 20, carry okay, 2, 30, yeah, 320. Okay, so this comes up to 320. So that means that this factorization is uh, correct. 
And it might be easier to plug your numbers in to this one as opposed to that one. Another thing, just uh, by chance here, um, at, if you take that equation, so h of t is equal to negative 16, t minus 7, and t plus 2, one of the reasons why we factor that is that this here uh, and this gives us zeros of the function. And those zeros are the places where the thing crosses this uh, x-axis or t-axis in this case. So this point right there would be one of these two. And you use a zero property to solve that. Um, so this would be t equals set, uh, t minus 7 equals 0 or t equals 7. And this one would be t equals minus 2. So at a time of 7 seconds, that's when the ground the ball would hit the ground. And t equals minus 2 would be the number over here. If you were to continue that graph, uh, that's where t of minus 2 would be. But this part of the graph doesn't make any sense because you're throwing the ball from right here. So that one I probably wouldn't include. Anyway, hopefully that helps with that question.